interception. But he certainly hasn't had much help from his guys up front. Play action pass on first down as Detmer swings it out and Calvin Williams makes the catch just re-signed this week. He spent six years with the Eagles, started this season with the Baltimore Ravens, and he was just signed a couple of days ago. And Ray Rhodes bringing Calvin Williams in is just a, a, a good example of Ray Rhodes motivating his players because that's what Calvin Williams is here for. He's here to let the other wide receivers, Chris T. Jones, not Fryer, but, but Jones and Freddie Solomon, he's here to let those guys know that if they don't pick up their level of play, they're going to lose their job. And Ray Rhodes is famous for doing that. On second and six, Waters makes the catch shy of a first down. And Tim, a moment ago, we looked at the numbers today, the comparison between Detmer and Graham. They were both late draft picks in 1992. There were 21 quarterbacks drafted that year and seven of the 21 on NFL rosters as we speak. And it's really it's really an incredible picture here when you see the guys in the higher up, the highest guys drafted, just backups uh, only now, and then you see the lower guys drafted, all these guys down here, not only uh, starters, but having pretty good seasons. Denver stumbled as the Eagles lose the football. Seth Joyner has recovered for the Cardinals. I think Ty Detmer may have been a victim of his own bad field because there's an area right in here on this turf that's just terrible. So we'll see if that, nope, that has nothing to do with the exchange. It's just a bad exchange between Detmer and Waters. And you see it there. Oh, no, nope, Waters causes this. He gets his hand in front of that ball. So the first turnover of the game by the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, Kenny, if you look at this right here, Ricky Waters has lost 19 fumbles since 1994. He leads the National Football League running backs in that category, which uh, certainly probably surprised a lot. And now, now we see Boomer Esiason back in. Back in, back, I mean, you know, back from a couple games ago. So Vince Tobin obviously has seen enough of Kent Graham in his four for 15 performance. And Leland McElroy took the pitch back from Esiason. He had those three unbelievable games consecutively, the last of which was the victory over the Eagles. That's right. And then he certainly dropped off the following week against Minnesota and then he dropped off precipitously how do you like that when they played the Dallas Cowboys where he had ample opportunity to win that game and then of course the controversy a week and a half ago when Ken Graham was named the starter right and then Boomer quit he walked out on his team and then he came back a few days later third down and two McElroy for the first down and more Leland McElroy finally tripped up by James Fuller after a gain of 17 yards. Well, Kenny, I happen to have a book on Leland McElroy. Did a lot of writing this weekend. Now, he loves to run up the middle, even though that play he ran to the outside. He's the youngest of 12 kids, and you can see us on that last play, he's got fresh legs. He came in, he missed training camp, he hasn't played very much this season, so his legs are fresh and they're explosive. 11 siblings, that's a lot of Christmas presents oh, for yeah. Leland McElroy and he, to buy. and he said that he went out in, uh, over the past couple of weeks and he spent all his free time shopping for Christmas presents for his 11 other siblings and then he got a special present for his parents. Now I know his parents are watching because they've got one of those satellite dishes. So I'm not going to tell him what it was, but it was a, it's a wonderful present that uh, shows that he's obviously a very, very thoughtful, uh, thoughtful young man. And what if his 11 siblings, brother Reggie, a Denver Bronco. Second down and four of a shot. Johnson, who had that 214-yard game earlier this season against the Saints, but lost his starting job to McElroy. Interesting that Vince Tobin would replace not only Kent Graham, but Leland McElroy and give some work to LaShawn Johnson. I don't think the Johnson thing is as, as surprising as the Boomer Esiason replacement. 
especially after what Boomer did last week, walking out on his team and then insinuating that Vince Tobin and the Cardinals did that because of incentive clauses in his contract. Flag on the play as the handoff goes to Larry Centers, the sixth consecutive run play since Esiason came in. He has not yet thrown a pass. Well, 12 penalties in the first half. This is the first Holding of the second half. Offense number 75. Five-yard penalty. Lomas Brown third again, his yeah. third penalty of the game, and he's headed to the Pro Bowl. Yeah, and uh, Mike Mamula obviously giving Lomas Brown headaches today. Here he is right here. There's Lomas. He's on Mamula, and he gets a hook under him. I don't see the holding on that. I, I think maybe they had the wrong, uh, the wrong guy. Well, speaking of Guy, Lois Brown's cousin is Guy McIntyre of the Eagles. So the cousins going up against one another today, at least their teams are. Boy, leave it to you to know the genealogy of Lomas Brown. Boomer's first pass attempt. And he was looking for Rob Moore, coverage on the play from Bobby Taylor. Now, Bobby Taylor, if the Eagles are going to advance through the playoffs, has to cover the big receivers like that. Now, Moore's a big physical guy, and you see here, Taylor's up there, and he's getting his hands on Moore. So he's using his big physical body there, and you see the hand on Moore to get excellent coverage, and he finishes the play because Moore has that in his hands, but it's Taylor using the body, using the arms to bring them up in front of Moore to knock that ball out of Rob Moore's hands. Kevin Butler in from 41 earlier. This will be a 42-yard field goal attempt. Steph Beagle's the holder. A kick from Butler is good. So Kevin Butler now two of two as they change the official spot. It is a 41-yarder. And the score is now Philadelphia 23, Arizona 6. A 23-6 lead for the Philadelphia Eagles as they look to make it 10 wins on the season as they await their wild card playoff game next Saturday or Sunday. Short kickoff by Butler. And the Eagles will fall on it at the 32-yard line. Well, Kenny, you've seen me writing books and putting these book-ons on all kinds of players, and, you know, this is my first season with you as an announcer, so it would only be appropriate if I put together the book on Kenny Albert. Oh, what a handsome-looking guy. Now, faster than a Pentium chip, he downloads his brain like a computer. He's Gretzky's NFL guru. Kenny, of course, the voice of the Rangers, and on the plane trips, Gretzky gets inside information about the NFL from Kenny Albert, and he always forgets his gym clothes. Now, and your, well, your wife Barbara is here in the booth, and I told her that during the course of the season, you were going to lose about 15 pounds, but, you know, working out with me every day, but you always forget your gym clothes, and so I think you've only dropped about three or four. I brought the gym clothes this week, but you dragged me to about five restaurants. We didn't have time to go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to eat hard on the road. You know, you got to... You got to uh, you got to eat hurt, and you got to have a good time when you're going around with the Fox crew. Well, and, we weren't uh, hurt, but we sure did eat. Yeah, we did. We did. Um, I just got a number from our stats guy that says uh, you actually added 20, but I don't believe that. Is there a scale in the booth? <laughs> Tim Green always up to his tricks. Now the Eagles from their own 33-yard line as Denver's pass is right on the money. It's Chris T. Jones at midfield. The first down. And right now for a McDonald's game break. Let's return to James Brown at our Fox Television Center. Been a good game at Lambeau Field. Brett Favre tossing his 37th TD of the season. This one to Dorsey Lemons. Packers up by seven. Kenny, I was afraid to ask about the book on me once Timmy started talking about being overweight. Back to you guys. Oh, no. <laughs> JV's not overweight. And he looks sharp in those suits. He's got the karate working. He's working out every day. Well, you know, Terry and Howie and Ronnie were all over JV uh, during the Thanksgiving Day game. I guess he mentioned his personal trainer on the Blue Game Show. And a flag is thrown. A couple of flags. That's going to be against Eric Swan. 
We talk about using martial arts. I know JB's a black belt, but Swan looks like he's using some martial arts on this last play. Now they're used to the hands, hands to the face. Number 98 on the defense. Five yard penalty, yeah. first down. Now you get frustrated, and Swan's an intense guy. You're going to see him right here working on Joe Panos. Now watch it, look at that, right there. And that looks like a JB type uppercut. And he just doesn't stop either. Look at this. Look at this picture right here. You want to play in the NFL? Go ahead. I mean, you got a 300 pounder. He's got blood all over his leg. I mean, Panos is just getting beat up out there. Eric Swan headed to his second Pro Bowl. So his season is not yet over following today's game. As flags come flying once again, Charlie Garner took the handoff from Detmer. This time it's Simeon Rice offside. So the penalties just never stop in this game. Both sides, defense, number 79, five yard penalty, still first down. Rice with 12 and a half sacks this season, which yeah. has tied the NFL rookie record. And what an interesting young man. I mean, he came to the NFL prepared to play probably as good as any rookie coming out of college and he was had a hold out he got into camp late but once he got into camp he showed that he was you know that he meant business by working out and running sprints on his own after practice and that really impressed the older guys on this Arizona defense Eagles send out four wide receivers but Denver finds Calvin Williams inside the first down marker. Williams' second catch of the game. The thing that Simeon Rice has, Kenny, is incredible athletic ability. He really has the, has the body control of a Panther. And you see there, all-time rookie sack leader, tied with Leslie O'Neill. And this guy is going to be a force in the NFL for years to come. And he doesn't even know everything that he's got quite yet because he still is a rookie. Waters scampers ahead for a couple. As we approach eight minutes remaining in this third quarter. Early, just 41 seconds in following the Mamula sack. He scooped it up. And scored his first career touchdown. One of only two touchdowns so far today. The rest have been field goals. Three, three, three yards to pick up another Eagles first down. Here you see Hollis Thomas, one of the big defensive linemen. And when you're a defensive lineman, this is what happens. I mean, you get that head bare, and all of a sudden the steam starts coming off of it. Where's that steam? No, you're working hard. From his head. That body gets overheated. I mean, it's cold out. But when you're that big and you're on the inside and in the trenches, work up that body temperature and it's got to come out somewhere so it comes out of your head as soon as that helmet comes off. Eagles call timeout. When we come back, we'll ask Tim if he ever had smoke coming out of his head. <laughs> Charlie Garner with a sprained left ankle off on the Eagles bench. So, Tim, any smoke coming out of your head during no, your playing not career? Mine, not mine and not Charlie Garner's. He hasn't been out there enough to have the smoke coming off of his head. And he's not big enough. I mean, Hollis Thomas is big enough so that he doesn't have to be out there very long to get the smoke going. First down from the Cardinals, 33. Irving Fryer inside the 10. Coming into this game, Ray Rhodes and John Gruden, the offensive coordinator, wanted Ty Detmer to get the chemistry back between himself and his wide receivers. And now he's got it. Because there's Irving Fryer. He stops up short, makes Eric Hill jump the route, and then he continues. Now, if you remember last week's game, if you, if you saw the Philadelphia Eagles, they were not in sync. Detmer and his receivers uh, that had the chemistry was imbalanced. Now he's got that chemistry back, and that's what they need going into the playoffs. Rookie Waters takes the handoff down to the seven, and right now for a NFL game break. Let's head to James Brown, our Fox Television Center. All right, Kenny, Jacksonville's lead is cut as Bobby Hebert finds Eric Metcalf. It is now a six-point game in a third. Well, you know the importance of this one. Can't be a tie here if Jacksonville wins. Chiefs up by three. Kenny and Tim. Well, 9-6.
It could be headed yeah. for overtime. Well, and the Falcons could still come back because Bobby Aber at quarterback position is never going to lay down no matter what time of the season or what the score of the game. Here's Waters cutting back 